Hello and welcome to this second video on how we can solve first order differential equations. In our previous video, we introduced the topic of differential equations and we solved differential equations in this form. Uh, dy by dx is equal to a function of x and we saw some different examples of functions of x in our previous video. But for all of those examples, we followed this method. We integrated both sides to find that y is equal to the integral of fx, the function of x, with respect to x. In this video, however, we're going to look at first order differential equations in the form of dy by dx equals fy, or a function of y. So the right hand side of our equation is now a function of y instead of a function of x. When we solved the equations in our previous video, we arranged them so that we, they were in the form of y equals, like we see on the left hand side here. In this video, we're going to try and find a solution in the form of x equals. And in order to do that with a, with a first order differential equation in this form, some rearrangements required. And what we're going to say is rather than dy by dx is equal to fy, instead we're going to say that dx is equal to dy over the function of y, fy. And the reason we've made this rearrangement is because now all of our x terms are on one side and all of our y terms are on the other side. And so then we can integrate our expression. Uh, the left-hand side will now be the integral with respect to dx being equal to the integral of dy over our function of y. This might not make too much sense as it stands, but we're going to go through two examples where hopefully it'll be a bit clearer when we put this into practice. Here's our first example where we have this expression dy by dx is equal to 3y plus 5. And again, the objective here is to solve this equation so that it's in the form of x equals. So here we see that the right-hand equation is a function of y. And so we must rearrange it as we saw on the previous section there. And so when we rearrange this expression, we will get something like this. dx is equal to dy over 3y plus 5. And then we're going to integrate both sides like we saw previously as well. Let's make a couple of observations at this point. Firstly, on the left-hand side, we have an integral with respect to x, dx. We can imagine that what we're really saying here is we're integrating 1 dx with respect to x. And so integrating 1 with respect to x gives us x. Secondly, on the right-hand side, we're integrating with respect to y. And so rather than saying dy over 3y plus 5, we could rearrange this to say that we're integrating 1 over 3y plus 5 with respect to y, the dy at the end there. And so what we find is something like this. On the left-hand side, our integral of 1 dx is just going to be x. On the right-hand side, the integral of 1 over 3y plus 5 with respect to y has to be solved by integration by substitution. Or we can refer to a table of standard integrals. We're not going to go into integration by substitution in this particular video. We do have a different video where we cover that in more detail. Uh, but in this case, what we find is when we, when we integrate this expression, we'll get something like this. We'll have x equals 1 over 3 multiplied by the natural logarithm of 5 plus 3y. And it's an indefinite integral, so we have this unknown constant plus c on the end. So at this point we've done what we set out to do, which was to solve this particular first order differential equation 
in the form of x equals a function in terms of y. But we don't know the value of this unknown constant c, and without any other information, this is as far as we can go. And just like in our previous video, this is what we call the general solution to this particular differential equation. Let's suppose that we do know some other information as well. Let's suppose that we're told that when x equals 1, y equals 1. And so what we can do is we can use this additional information to find what's called the particular solution. And we do this by substituting our values for x and y into the equation. So we can say now here that 1 equals a third times the natural logarithm of 5 plus 3 times 1 plus c. And we can rearrange that to find that 1 minus a third times the natural logarithm of 5 plus 3 times 1 is equal to c. And that simplifies to c being equal to 1 minus a third times the natural logarithm of 8. Technically, our expression for c that we've derived above is correct. But let's remind ourselves of one of the laws of logarithms, which might help to simplify things a little. Namely, we're going to look at this one here, where a times the natural logarithm of b is equal to the natural logarithm of b to the power a. Let's apply that here. Um, we can say that c was 1 minus a third log 8. But now we can say that that is equal to 1 minus log of 8 to the power of a third. And 8 to the power of a third is 2. So we have 1 minus log 2. That particular identity might not always be useful, but in this case, it simplified our expression a little bit. So finally, for this example, we can revisit the general solution that we found earlier. x equals a third log 5 plus 3y plus c. But now we know the value of c, and so we can write what's called our particular solution. x equals a third log 5 plus 3y plus 1 minus log 2. And they're all natural logarithms. Let's look at one more example in this video. Let's say that we have the expression y squared plus 5 multiplied by dy over dx is equal to 2y. Let's also suppose that we're told that when y equals 1, x equals 13 over 4. So again, we're going to rearrange this into the form dx equals to begin with. And that rearrangement is going to look something like this. We have dx equals y squared plus 5 over 2y dy. What we can do is we can break this fraction into separate terms, and it's going to make our integration a little bit easier. So we could say something like this instead, um, that being equal to y squared over 2y plus 5 over 2y, with dy on the end still there. So at this stage, we can integrate both sides, and that's a little bit easier now that we've broken this fraction into two separate fractions. Uh, integrating dx on the left-hand side, we said, just like in the previous example, that's going to give us x. And integrating y over 2 plus 5 over 2y with respect to y is going to give us y squared over 4 plus 5 times the natural logarithm of y, ln y, all over 2. And again, this is an indefinite integral, and so we have that unknown constant plus c on the end. Again, if you're not sure where this particular integration has come from, it's best to refer to a table of standard integrals um, where you might be able to see an integration in this particular form. So at this stage, we've arrived at the general solution. Uh, but let's suppose that we want the particular solution. We want to know the, the value of this unknown constant c. Well, we refer back to these two uh, bits of additional information that we were given. When y equals 1, x equals 13 over 4. 
and we simply substitute those for x and y in our equation. And so we have something that looks like this. Uh, 13 over 4 equals 1 squared over 4 plus 5 times the natural logarithm of 1 all over 2 plus c. And we can rearrange that. Um, it'll look something like this. But the answer for c comes out as 3. And so now we return to our solution, uh, which was our general solution, but now knowing the value of c, it's our particular solution. We have x equals y squared over 4 plus 5 log y over 2 plus 3. So I hope you found this video useful in how we can solve first order differential equations in the form of dy by dx equals a function of y. In our next videos, we're going to start to look at some applications of these types of equations, as well as look at what are called second order differential equations and how we can solve those as well.